Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Carpietto. Welcome to today. I wanted to just jump on here briefly just to encourage you and strengthen you and continue to tell you something a gazillionth time that you might be tired of hearing, but I pray that you're not. But we're going to look at areas in which that our heart is just being purified as we are humbled in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to understand what is going on in our members. And so the issue of the heart, which is in our body, it's the consecration of the body, Romans 12, 1. The issue of our heart is the infection of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is a virus. It is an infection. That's two great analogies a virus and an infection. And if you've ever had a virus and an infection at the same time, oh my goodness, I can tell you it's not fun because generally in the past, when I would get ready to go minister, I would get both a virus and an infection. And so I had to deal with both issues. And so the areas of our soul that are being dealt with are those that have the information of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so people don't realize that that tree has infected us in both areas. The good part gets us to look at our own self-righteousness, to judge others through that self-righteousness and make ungodly judgments. And it's still an infection. It causes us to truly be blind, to be totally deceived to the areas in our members where the enemy brings the power of suggestion, which is hypnosis. And he just gives us a little thought. And that little thought could cause our perception to misjudge others, to accuse, to misinterpret, to project on them what is actually going on inside of our members. And so I cannot emphasize a gazillion times. It just will not end till Jesus comes back. Till Jesus returns, or either I go first, whichever happens first, is I'm going to keep pre preaching the same message because it's so mysterious, it's such an enigma, and it's so above our understanding that this issue of the body has not been addressed because it's largely areas in Christian teachings that have been given over to New Age and one of the areas is about the light, but it's distorting the light of truth and what the word does in our members. And it focuses on just light and about this light coming into our soul. And one of the people that I saw this in many years ago, hold on, let me pull up this uh, scripture. And I just wanted to bring this up. Satan comes as an angel of light. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, and his ministers, his messengers as ministers of righteousness. And so, hold on, let me shut this door because Matthew's coughing. He's not sick. Sorry, I'm so up on you. He's not sick. He's just clearing up his throat. And I just, it's distracting me. And so I just had to shut the door. And so, I wish I could just take your person and this information just go into you by us osmosis, and that doesn't happen. Only Holy Spirit can bring understanding, which is why I'm being very redundant and repeating the same message over and over and over in different broadcasts on teachings, on walking with wisdom, as well as book coaching. And so, the issue of the self-image is one tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's infected us. Not only has it infected us, it's brought a virus. And so, an infection is generally in a certain area in the body where, anti where bacteria sets up and causes an attack against our person to turn into an inflammation storm, so to speak, to trigger cytokines, which then lead to the stress response. Whereas a virus is much on cell packaging 
especially what is called a dimer, a dimer cell within the different cells of our body. And so a virus can go throughout the entire person and is more abroad within us and is a whole different issue than an infection. And so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is both an infection lodged in wounds as well as a virus, sending misinformation all abroad through a person. This is what we're being pruned of. One of the areas that's heavily in New Age, I don't know why God has me exposing all this. My goodness, last week he had me talking about prophecy on walking with wisdom. And this week he has me exposing false teachings and false prophets. And so many years ago, when God told me about the kingdom living spirit and I heard him and I turned around to see who was speaking to me, he showed me and I had had many years prior, back about 2005, Katie Souza's teaching, her teachings about the glory and her teachings about healing. And she was mentored under Patricia King and both of those are false teachers and false prophets. Patricia King's a false prophet. And so Katie Souza's healing approach is just calling in the light, calling in the light. And that light is new age. It is the light of the enemy. It is not the light of truth. Now, the Word of God compares the Word, Scripture, to a light. And we see that in the core parable where Jesus talks about a seed that is planted in the soil, Mark 4, and that when that seed is planted, Mark 4, 20, it yields 30, 60, and 100 fold if it's in good soil. And then after that parable, he comes immediately with another parable. And he says, you don't bring a candle into a room to put it under something, under a peck measure. You put it on the lampstand so it brings light to the room. And so that is a metaphor for the word becoming rhema, becoming truth, revelation in your body. One of the things that the new age are doing is they have totally distorted that teaching of Christ. And they're talking about the light and calling in the light. And it's all about the light. And it is uh, coming in upon the members of your subconscious, the information of your body with the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it's overloading the good part of the knowledge of tree of good and evil and it's very euphoric and it makes you think you're so good that it's about the light it's awesome and it's totally discounted the word scripture because scripture says not that you shall know the light and the light shall set you free it says in john 8 32 you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And so the infection and virus of our person, of this, of this body, okay, of this body, the infection and virus is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It is the same as COVID. That is what it is like. And it takes away what? Senses, taste, and smell, which is funny because I really get into all that in the G protein coupled receptor. And those receptors are responsible for taste and smell, isn't that for all of your senses, but especially taste and smell. And viruses attach to the G protein coupled receptor and they hijack it. And half of my book, Mindfulness and Mind of Christ, is about the G protein coupled receptor. And I just think it's very interesting that it came out in the midst of COVID and the COVID virus hijacks that G protein coupled receptor in your body. And so what I call as an acronym, the G protein coupled receptor is the God power, the God, God's power in Christ resurrection, GPCR. It's called GPCRs, G protein coupled receptor. GPCR is God's power in Christ resurrection. And so the opposite of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is the knowledge of Christ, okay? 
the knowledge of Christ, which is what? <clears throat> the knowledge of the word. And that knowledge is not just up in the brain, Ephesians 3.19, but it is an experience of greater heights, depths, and widths in the body. It's an experience of the love of God. And right now, it cannot be spoken about enough how everything, and I talk about it in my book in great detail, how this G-protein coupled receptor influences all of your behavior and your perception. Because it is also, again, what your senses operate on, not only on your face, but also the eyes in your body, the ears in your body, the smell in your body, the taste in your body, all through your body, all through it. And it regulates your organs is taste, smell, is hearing and taste. I'm, I'm trying to think. Taste, smell, hearing, and seeing. You have all of those senses in your body and they regulate your organs, okay? And there is a reason for that. Those senses within your body were created to open your subconscious, your self-image, your soul. It's the same thing. To open up your soul to truth, truth. <laughs> and so the enemy hijacks that receptor because it's also information and memories are stored in that receptor in your body. And so the enemy hijacks that receptor and puts in bad information and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is operative in that receptor. And so you're going to see everything through that perception and you're going to make false judgments about other people because you need comfort. You need relief <laughs> from feeling bad. And so the relief that you get from feeling bad is to put judgments on other people. And I'm speaking from experience. Listen, God deals with me every day on this issue, and he really dealt with me on this issue yesterday as I was editing Just Be the Self-Image Journal, and it gets deeper and deeper into this subject matter that I'm talking about. And it really unpacks how our misperceptions of other people or are of that part of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil where we are so good. We are so good. And those people over there are bad. <laughs> you know, it's not up here to where you're conscious of it, but it's in the subconscious and it's the virus. It's the infection you need relief from and the false narrative to get you to think that you're tasting and you're smelling and you're doing the right things in life is to project your own narrative of I'm good or bad onto these other people. Say, so what is the solution? What is, what is our answer? It is the pruning of the word that John 15 to that the word prunes us in order to bear more abundant fruit so that John 15, 8 that we can present fruits of righteousness to glorify God. And then we also see in John 15, 16, that if, if we ask anything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, presenting him where? In our fruit, presenting him to the Father, then anything that we ask in his name will be answered. We will have it answered. And so this is the issue. This is the thing, okay? You have to continue the process to be pruned of the fact that you think you're good <laughs> or that you think you're bad, which is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it colors your perception. It influences all of your behavior. And so to do this, we have to humble ourselves, and we have to be open to, oh God, forgive me. I'm judging this person. The reason that I think these, this and this and this about this person, which is actually negative towards me, and it could be totally 
hypnosis, a false reality that is, I believe it's happening, but it's not happening. Those people aren't doing that to me, or this person isn't doing this to me, or it could be happening, but whether it's happening or not is irrelevant. It doesn't matter what others think about you because they're being attacked by the same tree. They think they're good or bad, and so they have to project all badness everywhere else onto other people so that they think they're good. And it keeps them sustained in, I'm okay, you might be okay, but you could be better. <laughs> you know? But what it really is, is God exposing the light of truth to get us to see that, look, God is for everybody. He's not for us and against others. He's for us and for them. We all have the same virus. We all have the same infection. And we all are looking for the same treatment, which is truth. Because truth gives us the knowledge of Christ so that we no longer judge others from the carnal nature of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but that we see other through the eyes of Christ. Imagine Christ coming into this world, leaving his throne of glory, and, you know, going to the cross and abasing himself. Oh my gosh, I mean, the fact that he loves us and he, he saw us. <laughs> He didn't see us as bad, you know? And he didn't see us as this all great, good person. He saw us through reconciliation. And I, I just pray that you just humble yourself and just ask God to give you the eyes of Christ for reconciliation to others. I'm telling you, the enemy messed with me this morning. And I was laying in my bed, and he was ready to put in thoughts. Oh, these people think this about you, and look how they're treating everybody else so much better than you. And I just said, no devil, no devil, no, no. And I just saw them through the eyes of Christ and how they were hurting the same way that I'm hurting and how they need to overcome the same way that I need to overcome. And I just prayed for them and I just prayed blessings. And I'm telling you, saints, it's the most potent thing to humble yourself before a mighty God and to look to have his eyes because how else could Jesus say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. How else could God, how else could Jesus do that except to have the ministry of reconciliation? Who even knows that if even some of those people standing before Christ came unto salvation on the day of Pentecost. We don't know that. But saints, we have to get rid of this infection. We have to get rid of this COVID, okay? This spiritual COVID. And so this virus. And so let's do it by having the eyes of Christ. God bless you. I love you.